Hey everyone, it's Lindsay here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to finish this cross stitching piece. This is my Shamrock Wishes and Irish Kisses pattern, um, and I wanted to do it in like a pillow. So what I did, first of all, you're going to, depending on what count of fabric you do this on, I like to leave about like a half an inch to an inch depending on how much of this fabric you want to show. I'm actually going to trim this down. It looks crooked <laughs> now that I'm like sitting down. So I kind of left about a half an inch from my stitching, but you can definitely, um, like I said, depending on how much cloth you want showing. So if I leave a half an inch, I'll have about a quarter inch showing because my seam allowance will be a quarter inch. So I picked these fabrics to make my pillow. Um, this green cross stitch fabric by Lori Holt and then this like plaid green also by Lori Holt. And depending on how big you want your pillow is how big you'll cut these. This one I cut, let's see, five inches by six inches and it will also depend on this piece so this pillow will be I might cut this down a little we'll see after I get it made so when I'm finishing a project this is kind of you kind of just start going and fixing it as you go and then we just got these in the shop they are Kimberbell um like this has pom-poms and tassels and we have different colors. I picked the white and I'm gonna use um, the pom-poms. So what I thought I would do, so I tested all this out and I thought it was really cute. So I'm just laying this out to see. And so I thought I would put the pom-poms right here. So that's kind of my plan. I thought maybe I would do some decorative stitches right here, maybe a button. We'll see. So first of all, you're going to place um, the fabric that's on the right side, right sides together. And then I'm actually going to take it, don't mind my messy back. <laughs> I'm going to take it to my machine with the cross stitching side up so I can just have my eye on this side. And I'm going to do a quarter inch seam allowance. This is what it looks like. So now um, I can go ahead and press this. So I've got my iron over here. Okay. So I pressed that. Looks really nice. And now I am going to place my bottom piece right sides together. And you can see it's a little short, but that's okay. I can trim this off when I'm done. But So I'm going to start over on this side and just line it up. And so a quarter inch all the way down. All right, so I've sewn my quarter inch and I pressed it. So you can see I have a little overage right there, which is okay. I'm going to trim that when I'm ready. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this where I'm going to put some over the edge. Sorry for the major shadows. Kind of doing this at night. There's not a lot of light in here. I'm actually going to move that one because I don't like how that's skinny right there. Okay. Um, you could definitely pin this into place. I'm just going to carefully take it to my sewing machine. And let me zoom in here. I'm going to sew as close to this edge as I can. All right, so I have, I do wanna let you know this is stretchy. So I tried really hard not to do any pulling or stretching when I sewed that on. Um, so now we, this little pom-pom, is gonna be in my seam allowance, so I'm gonna just trim it off. And then this one too. Okay, I've still left my overage, which is fine. So I've picked 
uh, this piece to go on my back. <clears throat> so I'm gonna zoom out a little so you guys can see. I'm gonna place it right side up. Now, this is not technical at all. Like, this is what makes this so easy. Um, I'm going to purposely not line up my edges very well because I can trim it off. So what I'm going to do, because, you know, you're going to have movement and this just makes it so you have room for error. And I'm going to start right, I'm going to leave an opening down here at the bottom. Um, or I changed my, my mind. I'm going to do this with the Lori Holt method where I'm going to completely close this. No, don't leave any opening. Uh, she did a video about doing this and it actually turns out really cute. So I am going to, um, pin this because there will be movement. When you're sewing pieces like this, there's movement when you sew. So I'm gonna quickly put in some pins. And the reason I'm gonna do the this method that um, sew all the way around and not leave an opening is because it looks cleaner and crisper, the final product. And I'll show you, we'll add some cuteness to the back so it, you know, you don't like see the opening. We'll cover it with some felt and like a button. And I have my pom-poms here so there's some fullness so I'm just being careful around those. Trying not to do any stretching. So I'm gonna take this over to my machine and I'm gonna do a quarter inch all the way around this edge. And then I will trim off the excess. All right, so I've sewn a quarter inch all the way around and now I'm going to trim off my excess, making sure to leave my quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to mark where I want to cut into. So just do a little X. You can use scissors or you can use a seam ripper. So you're going to pull this apart so you're not using, you're not getting your front. And I'm going to just grab this. I've made a tiny hole. Now we need a big enough hole that we can stuff our stuffing into, but we don't want to go so giant. But we will put like some felt over this and it'll be really cute. I think I need to go bigger. There's a lot of stuffing I gotta put in here. Okay, so you can see I've got my hole. Now you can also trim off your little corners right here, being careful not to go into your seam allowance. I backstitched on my corners really good, so. Okay, so you're gonna flip it by going through that hole Being careful, trying not to make your hole bigger. I'm gonna pop out those corners. Um, there is a tool that you can use 
to get these corners nice and crisp. Don't use your scissors. You don't want to pop a hole through your fabric. This comes in like your batting stuffing or you could use like a bamboo um, skewer or a chopstick. Something with a blunt edge because we've, at least I have, I've used my scissors and have gone straight through. It's, I think we kind of get lazy and want to Oh my gosh, you guys, that's going to be so cute. Okay, so I make sure I like how my corners look before I start adding stuffing. I think we're good. I'm going to move my mat so I can give this a nice press. So what I like to do is I like to roll my seam, oh, zoom in, so to get it nice and crisp, and then you're just going to carefully press that seam. You can do it from the front too if you, it's probably a better idea. Just try not to go on your stitching. Actually, I don't know if I can iron that trim. So I'm going to go from the back. This one I can do. I already did that side. Okay, the front. Got a funky corner right there. And this last side. I'm not going crazy with the iron because I've got that trim and I don't know if I can use heat on it or not. <laughs> now I'm gonna just give my actual fabric a nice press. Feels a little crooked but I think it'll be okay once we add the stuffing so I'm gonna go grab my stuffing and start doing this and I'm gonna grab some felt and a button or two okay so I'm back with my batting I just have polyester batting here you can find it pretty much at any craft store and this tool will come in handy for stuffing your corners um, So depending on how fluffy you want your pillow, I like mine pretty full when I do them. I just think they look better. So you can see you can just grab it with your thing and push it in there. Got thread everywhere, you guys. Okay. Need some over here, down here. I like to like look at the front and see. I need some up, up in this area. And I've kind of tucked my, see how it's kind of just tucked in those pieces? We're gonna cover that, don't worry. I'm going to use this tool to kind of push things into the corners. Let's see what we're looking like here. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is going to be so cute. Need a little bit more on this side. I mean, I think that's looking pretty good. Let me just fill it. I mean, I always feel like I'm done and then I end up stuffing it some more. Like, I feel like I could just keep stuffing forever. <laughs> oh, okay. Because this middle part, okay. Oh, that's better, I think. And you can kind of like push on it. Perfect. Okay, so I have, I'm going to set this aside. So I 
cut a piece of felt that I knew would go over this. And then I thought that looked kind of weird, just having the felt. So I cut a piece of fabric. And I'm going to sew this so it looks kind of like a stamp. I'm just going to sew, take this piece to my sewing machine, sew all the way around so this stays put. And then we will sew this on to the pillow. Here is my little stamp. I like to call it a little stamp. I'm not going to place it like straight. I want it to look kind of off-centered. And then I've threaded... Well, I did have threaded a needle. I just unthreaded it. Okay. So I have just not a tapestry needle. This is actually a sharp needle. And I'm going to make a knot on the bottom. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start. I'm going to go up. through like that and then whoops I just thought that was a thread <laughs> okay so then I'm just gonna go up and you can do like a blind stitch but I don't I'm not using white thread with white felt so I'm just gonna do a running stitch kind of if that's what that's called I'm not an expert I... with what stitches are called <laughs> I just kind of make it up as I go and you can do them big you can do them small oops I'm caught on this so just go in and make sure you're going through your pillow. That's the biggest thing is because so, we're attaching it to the pillow. Let me tighten that back up. Okay, so I'm going to quickly finish going all the way around and tie off. Put in a little one right here. Oops, I just snagged my fabric. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing that and go all the way around. All right, so I just finished. It's nice and secure and it has a cute little patch on the back. You could add a button. I did pull a button, but it's not big enough and it's really cute, but it almost matches my fabric. So I definitely could do that at a later time if I found just the perfect button. Um, other ideas to add extra cuteness would be adding some decorative, like, exit cross stitches right here that are, like, maybe this thread color. I might do that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I'm actually super happy with how it turned out. And you can find the pattern to the cross stitch in my shop. It will be linked below. Um... And you can basically do this with any uh, cross stitch project. You know, when you figure out the technique, really the, the sky's the limit. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you next time.